Let's All right. talk about the uh, Trevon Martin case and what's going on in Florida. Well, right I now. have a different take, uh, Brian, on that. I, I believe that George Zimmerman, the overzealous neighborhood watch captain, should be investigated to the fullest extent of the law, and if he is criminally liable, he should be prosecuted. But I am urging the parents of black and Latino youngsters particularly to not let their children go out wearing hoodies. I think the hoodie is as much responsible for Trayvon Martin's death as George Zimmerman was. Do you hear that, everybody? See, the problem isn't the preconceived racism that a lot of people have. The problem is those Latinos and, and black kids wearing hoodies. Yeah, I mean, you're just asking for it if you're wearing a hoodie. I mean, if you're a black guy wearing a hoodie and walking down the street, you're just asking for some racist to run up and start shit with you, call the cops on you, or shoot you in the chest, or possibly all three, huh? What do you mean? When you, when you see a kid walking, Juliet, when you see a kid walking down the street, particularly a, a dark-skinned kid like my son Cruz, who I constantly yelled at when he was going out wearing a damn hoodie or those pants around his ankles, take that hood off. People look at you and they watch. What's the instant identification? What's the instant association? It's those crime scene surveillance yeah. tapes. Every time you see someone sticking up a 7-Eleven, the kid's wearing a hoodie. Every time you see a mugging on a surveillance camera or they get the old lady in the alcove, it's a kid wearing a hoodie. You have to recognize that this whole stylizing yourself as a gangster, you're going to be a gangster wannabe. Well, people are going to perceive you as a menace. So in Geraldo's small, small little mind, um, if you wear a hoodie, and it was raining that night, uh, and it was in February, and here in Florida, it gets a little bit chilly, but some people just like to wear hoodies, well, because they're comfortable. And so what the real problem here is, is that the black kid was wearing a hoodie while he walked home, uh, and he was trying to be a gangsta, gangsta as uh, Geraldo would say. Gangsta, gangsta. But I guess George Zimmerman, who's going around with a fucking concealed nine millimeter gun, uh, I guess he's not trying to be a gangsta or, or anything. I mean, what do you think is more gangsta? Someone wearing a hoodie or someone with a concealed fucking nine millimeter? Uh, I would say the, the wannabe gangsta would be the fucking dude with the gun, asshole. That's what happens. It is an instant reflexive wow. action. Remember Juan Williams, our colleague, our brilliant colleague, he got in trouble with NPR because he said Muslims in formal garb at the airport uh, uh, conjure a certain reaction in him or a response in him. That's an automatic reflex. Juan wasn't defending it. He was explaining that that's right. what happened when he sees these particular people in that particular place. When you see a black or Latino youngster particularly on the street, you walk to the other side of the street. You try right. to avoid that confrontation. Exactly what confrontation are you avoiding? Uh, basically what you're saying is people are racist or judgmental assholes and that what needs to be changed are the people they are judgmental towards, not their own notions and their, their own racisms. If, if you, every time you see a black guy in a hoodie, you cross the street because you're worried that they're going to rob you or something, uh, it's because you're racist, most likely, not because you've been robbed by a bunch of black guys in hoodies. Uh, and that's what needs to be changed is your fucking racism, not the uh, wardrobe of African Americans. Trayvon Martin's, uh, you know, uh, God bless him, he's an innocent kid, a wonderful kid, a box of Skittles in his hand. He didn't deserve to die, but I'll bet you money. If he didn't have that hoodie on, that, uh, that nutty neighborhood watch guy wouldn't have responded in that violent right. and aggressive way. What? All right, Geraldo, I'll bet you money that if George Zimmerman didn't have a concealed 9 millimeter fucking handgun on him, he wouldn't have had the balls to go chase down this black kid in a hoodie that he was so terrified of and was calling 911 on for no fucking reason. Okay? I'll put money on that. That if, you know, forget if Trayvon was wearing a hoodie or not. Let's, let's think about the gun that George Zimmerman had, that he had a license to conceal the fucking thing and obviously was a nut job. I'll put money that if he didn't have that fucking gun, this wouldn't have happened.
What, what about the fact, I mean, the people of New York, a couple of nights ago, they had a million hoodie march. You not cannot helping. rehabilitate the hoodie. You're not going to, I understand that the reaction might be overzealous or even irrational in some extent. I mean, when you look at the statistics, it may be, but you're not going to rehabilitate the hoodie. You're not going to. Just first, stop wearing stop it. Stop wearing it. Don't let your kid, you know the old uh, right. uh, Johnny Cash song, don't take your gun to town, son, leave your gun at home. There is some things that are almost. Almost inevitable. I'm not suggesting that Trevon Martin uh, had any kind of weapon or anything, but he wore an outfit that allowed someone to respond in this irrational, overzealous way. Yes. And if he had been dressed more appropriately, I think if unless it's raining out, this guy looks like he's up to no good, or he's on drugs or something. It's raining. He just or you're at a track meet. Leave the hoodie home. Don't let gotcha. your children go out. Did, did that motherfucker seriously just use? Johnny Cash lyrics about leaving your gun at home as an argument against hoodies. You know the old uh, right. uh, Johnny Cash song, don't take your gun to town, son, leave your gun at home. That, not the gun that George Zimmerman had. He, no, not, not as a metaphor for George Zimmerman, leave your fucking gun at home because he ended up using it and killing an innocent kid, like you said, that didn't deserve to die. But when you use the Johnny Cash lyrics, you know, leave your gun at home, you, you're talking about the sweatshirts. Because you see, right now, I'm, I'm just totally fine, but now, boom, evil. Oh, I'm, I'm so fucking evil now. Don't you want to shoot me in the chest? And I mean, I deserved it. I was wearing a fucking sweatshirt. I, I deserve to be shot because I'm wearing a sweatshirt. I mean, what if it's at night? Are you kidding me? Wearing a sweatshirt at, at night? And I mean, I know I'm white, but what if I was black? If I'm wearing a sweatshirt, it's night and I'm black. Or, come on. I'm fucking asking for it. And, and who can blame the guy who's just overzealous about his community watch and called the cops over and over and over and over and over again on various different black males that were walking around in this. And this is not like a gated community, like everyone's thinking with nice houses and shit. This is a gated community where they have a gate around basically like an apartment complex. Not to mention the racist slurs that George Zimmerman used and that you can hear. He says some shit that you could like, these assholes always get away. These assholes, they always get away. And under his breath, you can hear him saying fucking coons. Shit, he's running. He's running? Which way is he running? Uh, he's down towards the uh, other entrance of the neighborhood. Okay, which entrance is that that he's heading towards? The back entrance. <laughs> And I've heard people defend him saying, oh, he said goons, not coons. But even then, who says fucking goons about a kid who's not doing anything? He's walking. He hasn't punched anyone. He's not fighting. He's not screaming. He's not bothering you. You haven't seen him break into a car or a house. I mean, he's not peeping in through windows, but you're spying on him. So let's blame the kid for wearing the hoodie. Fuck you, Geraldo. Fuck you. And for any of you that don't know, I live in the Orlando area, so this is very close to where I stay and where I live, uh, less than an hour. And uh, so it's it's hit home, and the, we, I get the local news on this stuff all the time. I, You know, all the updates that they're not really covering nationally, and certainly Geraldo doesn't give a fuck about. But, uh, you know, the, with the witness statements that are coming out and eyewitness testimony, the Department of Justice having to step in, it's obvious that it was very poorly handled by the police department, which doesn't surprise me because most of the cops around here are fucking retarded. I never really noticed the cops until I moved to Florida and they just treat everyone like shit. It doesn't surprise me one bit that they try and let this guy get away with pretty much murder or manslaughter at the very fucking least. This guy escalated the situation, followed the kid, escalated the situation, confronted this probably scared kid who's wondering who the hell is following me. And when Somehow, this guy who had 100 pounds on the kid, Zimmerman was a bigger, older guy with a gun, and somehow he ended up on his back, supposedly, and uh, Tra this is his story that's just coming out, that Trayvon was choking him or something like that and broken his nose. But If that's the case, maybe you, if, if you're not a good enough fighter and you can have a kid that weighs 100 pounds less than you kick your ass, maybe you shouldn't be chasing guys around. If you can have your ass beaten so easily, I now I see why you need the gun because you knew you couldn't fucking fight fair. You know, if he's using his fist, you had to use a fucking gun 
We, we can do without people like George Zimmerman and Geraldo Rivera. Cocktopus out.